our goal for the participants in the T32 program after they leave the program and after they leave uh, the residency for the postdocs is to take a position as a faculty member in an academic department of otolaryngology to of course see patients and be a great clinician but also to be able to do their own investigator directed research and that would involve applying for and being successful at getting grants from a variety of agencies including the NIH um, publishing peer-reviewed journals, serving as reviewers for on editorial boards of journals, working at the national level for helping to set policy and other aspects of otolaryngology care. Ultimately going on and becoming uh, perhaps a program director themselves or in some way training the next generation of clinician scientists. I am actually mentoring several med students and uh, residents and also working with fellows. A lot of the research that we're doing is obviously a little bit more clinically oriented just because I don't have a lab yet. I am kind of thinking of a basic science project that I would love to continue to do. Obviously looking for funding opportunities and kind of keeping my ears and eyes open. I learned kind of a lot of lessons from Dr. Pinello uh, throughout my time there and also realizing just how much sometimes NIH grant funding is really hard to come by. The plan coming into um, the T32 program was to set up my career that I'd have as many opportunities as available. I knew I really enjoyed basic science research and I thought the T32 program, at least at Wash U, would provide me with unlimited opportunities to engage in any aspect of research, any specialty of research, and be successful. We have a monthly academic career development conference and the goals of that conference are to provide uh, skills in scientific communication, grantsmanship, grant writing, academic performance, how to succeed in science, and all of those are really important skills that you don't get in medical school and you don't really get in anywhere else. These are the skills that are so important to being a successful clinician scientist. I remember a series of seminars on grant writing. If you want to be a physician scientist, grant writing is of course a very important skill to have. I really appreciate it when we did our seminars having a chance to do core grants and go through the grant writing process to critique other grants and to have the opportunity to write your own. Through that process, I actually was able to be funded with two core grants during that time, which was, which was a phenomenal experience. I remember Dr. Susan McKinnon coming to talk to us at one of these seminars and the insights she had on how to juggle work-life balance and all of those anecdotes were helpful to me. All of our uh, trainees are expected to engage in leadership activities, whether that be um, resident forums and medical student forums. Um, we also encourage them to serve as reviewers for our major medical journals. We have a whole training program called Reviewer U that helps our trainees become reviewers for JAMA Otolaryngology. We fund travel to meetings and uh, other opportunities for our trainees to interact at a national level and to gain those skills that will help them assume roles of leadership in the future. Dr. Piccarello and I went to Germany. We went to a small conference in Würzburg, Germany, and I think that was memorable in getting to meet other researchers uh, around the world and also around the states, and then see what sort of research was being done abroad. My next step after residency is um, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do an, a fellowship. Some of the fields that I'm interested in right now at the moment are head and neck surgery, so head and neck cancer surgery, as well as um, rhinology skull-based surgery, um, but I'm still, I still haven't decided yet. Both of those are one year, so after then, you know, I, I hope to get an academic position as an assistant professor. So a unique aspect of the T32 program here at uh, Washington University is the opportunity to interact with the really exciting entrepreneur and tech transfer environment that's really blossomed at Washington University over the last five to seven years. We have centers like the Cortex Center, which was a $25 million investment by Washington University to seed entrepreneurship and tech transfer development related to WashU intellectual property. We have the Scandalaris Center and other centers that work with venture capitalists and others in the Midwest to help translate uh, intellectual property, intellectual ideas, device development into commercial property. Our trainees are sought after to help uh, review proposals, to vet the science, to work with the venture capital business people to help provide the science perspective on uh, many investments that are being considered. It's a great uh, internship, um, externship opportunity for our trainees, and we strongly encourage them to take advantage of this entrepreneur um, opportunity.
some of the areas that I wanted to kind of check out that I would not really have the opportunity to do so otherwise were some bio-entrepreneurship courses. So I've, the electives um, slotted in nicely with MSCI degree. Getting involved in that entrepreneurial portion of this project is uh, I've engaged in some of the coursework that's available here at WashU, which is this entrepreneurship for business course. We're trying to take a basic discovery that we made in the lab and turn it into an asset. And so the entrepreneurial aspect is new to all of us. And we recently won a competition through the Scandalaris Center, which is called LEAP, Leadership Entrepreneurial Acceleration Program. And this is a, a way to meet the people in the Washington University ecosystem who are involved in business development. When you want to take a project to the next level to try to turn it into an asset, you really need help by people in the business community in order to form a small business and attract small business loans from the NIH. The things that set WashU apart are the breadth and depth of the faculty, the high quality of our trainees, the support of the institution, and just the history of high quality research that's being done. It's something that we um, live and breathe all the time here at WashU. I chose WashU because to me it felt like it would give me the richest experience in both surgery as well as in research. I loved the track record, I loved the history of the program. So I think that the T32 program certainly gave me the building blocks to continue doing research as a big part of my career right now. I think it did kind of open up my eyes in terms of the path that I was choosing and just sort of realizing the challenges that would come up and to actually examine and be able to ask myself, you know, is this something that I am willing to take on? Is this something that I really want to pursue? The ENT residency is five years, the T32 is additional two years, and my fellowship was two more years. Looking back of nine years of training, I never saw it as nine years of training. I saw it as nine years of continued learning, and I loved every minute of it.